This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Good afternoon, my Real News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update for January 22, 2023. And in the news this afternoon, man killed after allegedly shooting cop at Westmoreland Bar. A man who allegedly shot and injured a policeman is dead and an illegal firearm and ammunition seized following an incident at a bar in Farm Pen, Westmoreland on Saturday night. The deceased has been identified as 33-year-old Mikhail Davis from the community. Reports from the police are that an off-duty police officer was a patron at a bar when he observed Davis dressed in a grey hooded jacket with an object shaped like a gun in the front pocket of the jacket. Davis then walked from the bar and returned shortly after, looked in the direction of the constable, and again walked out of the bar. According to the report, the constable went in pursuit of Davis, who is alleged to have run off upon seeing the officer. The constable reportedly identified himself as a police officer and instructed Davis to stop. However, the suspect continued running and subsequently fell to the ground. It is alleged that Davis immediately pulled a firearm and fired, hitting the off-duty cop on his upper left arm. The cop then pulled his Glock service pistol and returned fire hitting Davis in his chest, arms, abdomen and left foot. The officer thereafter retrieved the firearm, which was found to be a black Glock 99 mm pistol with four rounds of ammunition. The off-duty officer is said to have called for police assistance and later drove himself to the Savannah Lamar Public General Hospital for treatment. Davis was transported shortly after to the hospital by the police where he was pronounced dead. This is the second police fatal shooting in Westmoreland since the start of the year. Husband of prominent Westmoreland lawyer charged for illegal gun. The husband of a prominent Westmoreland lawyer has been arrested and charged with illegal possession of firearm and ammunition following a police operation in Little London, Westmoreland on Sunday. Charged is 36 year old Jason Barrett of a Rose Street, Seven Alamar address in the parish. Reports from the Westmoreland police are that about 12 30 a.m., a team of officers was on mobile patrol in the Big Bridge area when Barrett was seen at the front of a shop with a bulge to the right side of his waistband. Barrett was accosted and searched and a firearm taken from his waistband. The firearm was inspected and found to be a black and a silver Smith and Weston Springfield 9mm pistol with a magazine containing 69mm rounds of ammunition. Barrett thereafter informed the police that he was a licensed firearm holder. The police then requested that he produce his firearms user's license. Barrett then went to his vehicle and made checks and later told the police he left the license at home. The police later accompanied him to his home to retrieve the license. Whilst at his house, he reportedly failed to produce the firearm license and thereafter admitted to the lawman that he is not the holder of a firearm user's license. Barrett was subsequently charged. Negril man shot dead by gunmen on motorcycle. A man was gunned down while charging his cellular phone at a neighbor's house in Nonparil Heights, Negril, on Saturday morning. The deceased has been identified as 42 year old Marlon Robinson from the community. Police report that about 10 a.m., Robinson and a female friend were walking along the Heskeith Main Road when they stopped at a house in order for Robinson to charge his cellular phone. While he was waiting on his cellular phone to be charged, the female friend went inside the house and Robinson remained outside. The report said two men later rode up on a motorcycle and began talking to Robinson. Shortly after, one of the men brandished a handgun and fired several shots at Robinson before fleeing with his crony on the bike. The police were summoned and on the arrival of the lawman, Robinson was seen lying on his left side inside the yard with what appeared to be gunshot wounds to his head and back. He was subsequently transported to the Savannah Lamar Public General Hospital, where he was pronounced dead. Robinson is said to have recently returned from prison after serving a 13-year sentence for murder. Investigations are ongoing, the report said. Driver injured as a BMW crashes and bursts into flames. 
The driver of a BMW motor car was admitted to the St. Anne's Bay Regional Hospital on Saturday night after the car crashed and burst into flames along the Uteriosa Bypass. A resident who lives near the crash scene told the news that the accident occurred shortly before 8 p.m. The BMW was heading eastward along the bypass when a car reportedly emerged from the Buckfield Main Road and into its path. The BMW crashed into the side of the car before careening into a tree and bursting into flames. An adult male and a young boy were reportedly able to quickly exit the BMW, but the driver had to be assisted by residents who were nearby. The fire brigade was summoned and arrived to put out the blaze while the driver was taken to the hospital. His condition is unknown. It is unclear whether the occupants of the other vehicle were injured. Local Government Minister Hands Over Two Indigent Houses in St. Mary Minister of Local Government and Rural Development Desmond McKenzie handed over two houses to persons in St. Mary under the Ministry's Indigent Housing Program. 64-year-old Shirley Nugent of Hamilton Mountain in Arakabeso received the keys to a studio unit valued at $4.5 million, and 83-year-old George Sims of Haywood Hall, Port Maria, received the keys to a one-bedroom unit valued at $5 million. The self-contained units were constructed using concrete, block, and steel with a full bathroom suite, countertops, and cupboards for the kitchen and a living sleeping area. The units are to be fitted with water tanks. Speaking at the official handover ceremony on January 20, Mackenzie said the total investment in social housing in the parish so far stands at $27.5 million. It is the intention of this administration to ensure that those persons who are in need of proper housing have the opportunity to access this, he said, noting that the government is committed to improving the housing stock across the country. Mackenzie stated that as part of this mandate, more housing solutions are to be rolled out to meet the demand for housing. We in the Ministry of Local Government are playing our part in contributing to the housing stock of the country as announced by the Most Honorable Prime Minister, he stated. In addition, Mackenzie said, the resumption of the repair component of the housing assistance program is to be announced shortly, and that the amount allocated to the program is to be improved upon. Meanwhile, Mayor of Port Maria, Councillor Richard Crary, said so far, four units have been approved under the Indigent Housing Program for residents of the parish. He informed that the construction of three units have been completed and handed over to the recipients, while the construction of the fourth is underway. We really applauded this program. Prior to then, we were dependent on food for the poor, who over the years have assisted us greatly in this regard in providing housing for our citizens. But this program has taken new light where we see quality houses made of block and steel, and the finishing are very well done. I would like to commend Minister McKenzie for taking this program to another level, he said. The Indigent Housing Program is designed to specifically address the challenges of substandard housing by providing more effective ways to respond to the needs of citizens for decent shelter. Applicants for the program are screened through the Poor Relief Department in each municipality. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.